Today we're going to talk about consumer preferences. In particular, we use a utility function to indicate the level of satisfaction that a person gets from consuming a good. If we denote the quantity of the good with x, then utility will be simply a function u of x. Since this is going to give us a numerical value, we can graph that, fun that function. If the consumer likes the good, then we can assume utility will be increasing. Let's say it looks like this. It turns out that the rate at which it's increasing is important. So we're going to define marginal utility, mu of x, as the extra utility one gets from consuming one more unit of the good. So we could write that as u of x plus 1 minus u of x. In the graph, you could see that if we picture moving to the right by one unit, so adding one more unit to x, then that vertical rise is the difference between u at x plus 1 and u at x. So marginal utility will be approximately equal to that slope. Okay, so marginal utility is the slope of the utility function. Now, if you're wondering how come I drew the function this way, it turns out that this pattern is, is a typical one. So we expect that as you consume more and more of a good at the margin, so meaning with every extra unit, utility will increase more and more slowly. And that is the law of diminishing marginal utility. It simply says that mu of x decreases as x increases. It's important to note that it doesn't say that utility decreases as x increases. We're not saying that the function starts to dip down. We're saying that it will increase more slowly. Furthermore, this doesn't have to hold at all levels. So it's perfectly plausible to think that perhaps as you're developing a taste for a good, initially you like more units more and more. The law of diminishing marginal utility simply says that eventually, so past a certain quantity, your extra gains from consuming one more unit and one more unit will start to decrease. Next, let's discuss preferences from the consumption of two goods. So if we use x1 and x2 to indicate quantities of the two goods, then utility will be a function of both variables. And again, we can define marginal utilities as the increase in utility when we increase the quantity of that good by one. So marginal utility of good one will simply be and the same for good two. Now, we run into a difficulty. Remember when we had utility of only one good, we were able to graph the utility function and see marginal utility in the graph and so on. But now that there are two goods, we would need an extra dimension. So if this was x1, we would need to also have some dimension that goes into the board with x2. And now utility would depend on both coordinates and would, would actually be a pl plane. That's fairly difficult to graph or to think about. And in fact, it's exactly the same problem that map makers have when they try to illustrate a mountain in a flat map. The solution they tend to come up with is that of using contour lines, of showing paths of equal elevation. And that's exactly what we're going to do, except now because we're talking about utility, 
a contour line for utility will be points that have equal utility value and so that the consumer is indifferent between and that's why we call them indifference curves. So an indifference curve is simply a set of points where the value of utility is fixed at a certain level. So there will be an indifference curve for any value that utility can take. Indifference curves will be shown in the x1, x2 plane. And let's go ahead and try to draw one of them. Suppose that we identify an initial point, starting point, where utility has value u0. Where might other points on this indifference curve be? A good way to go about that is to simply simulate a change in one of the variables and see how the other variable must change in order to keep us on the same curve. Suppose that we were to increase quantity of good one by one unit. What would happen to the value of utility? Well, by definition, utility would increase by mu1. Okay. So in order to come back to the same indifference curve, we will have to decrease utility by mu1 through a decrease in x2. Every time we decrease x2 by one unit, we decrease utility by mu2. And so, in order to decrease utility by mu1, we'll need to decrease good 2 by mu1 over mu2. So this will now be another point on the indifference curve that goes through the initial point. And so already you can hopefully see that indifference curves will necessarily be downward sloping at least as long as both marginal utilities are positive. So by definition along an indifference curve utility doesn't change. Well then if you like both goods the only way to maintain <clears throat> the same level of happiness when you have more of one good is to have less of the other, hence the negative slope. So indifference curves are always going to be negatively sloped if marginal utilities are positive. What else can we say about the shape and about the slope? Well, First thing we'll say is that it turns out that slope of the indifference curve is a very important vari variable. We'll define it uh, right now. It's called the marginal rate of substitution, abbreviated as MRS. So MRS is the absolute value of the slope of an indifference curve. It also has a definition that states marginal rate of substitution tells us how many units of good two we need to give the consumer in order to compensate them for the loss of one unit of good one or equivalently, how many units of good 2 we need to take from the consumer after they gain the unit of good 1 in order to bring them back to the same utility level. And you can see that's exactly the thought process we had here. So MRS, in other words, is a measure of the value of good 1 in units of good 2. We could also say that it equals the ratio of marginal utilities. Let's talk more about the marginal rate of substitution. First of all, as a reminder, we said that indifference curves have to be downward sloping if the consumer likes both goods, because in order to remain at the same happiness level, whenever he has more of one good, he has to have less of the other. Okay, well, the marginal rate of substitution, we said, can be defined in more than one way. One will be that it is the absolute value of the slope of the indifference curve. 
So since we know that the slope is always negative, we're only going to look at the positive value. And so we could picture it as by increasing the amount of good one by one unit, as we said, that means we have to reduce the amount of good two by mu1 over mu2, or the other way around. And so that is an alternative way of defining the margin rate of substitution. So we could define it as the amount of good two necessary to either give to the consumer in order to compensate them for the loss of a unit of good one, or to take away from the consumer in order to make up for their gain of a unit of good one. Okay, so either way, it's about the vertical distance that needs to be traveled in order to come back to the indifference curve when we've moved horizontally by one unit. And so, therefore, it equals the slope. So the most helpful way to think about it is as the value that the consumer places on good one, the good on the horizontal axis, as measured in units of the good on the vertical axis. Now, we have a property analogous to diminishing marginal utility from when we were talking about the utility of a single good, and that is diminishing marginal rate of substitution. What this says is that MRS, so the slope, decreases as we move along an indifference curve towards more of good one and less of good two. Okay, so let's stop for a second to see what that means. It means that as you have more of good one and less of good two, you will place l a lower extra value on one more unit of good one in terms of good two. You could see how this is analogous to diminishing marginal utility. And in fact, if we have diminishing marginal utility of both goods, we also have diminishing marginal rate of substitution. In the graph, diminishing MRS means that the slope will get flatter as we move along the indifference curve in this direction. In other words, it will be bowed towards the origin. And that has a further interesting implication, and that is if we compare two baskets where either we have a lot of good one and very little of good two, or the other way around, if we're indifferent between those two baskets, we will strictly prefer an average basket. 